to today's video, where we are drowning in plumbing duties. <laughs> Previously on Gus the Struggle Bus. <laughs> Plumbing, plumbing stuff material looks like. can do. It's not a lot of stuff, but it is expensive. Welcome to our plumbing part one. We're gonna do as much work as we can do right now. So we're just gonna show you how we're gonna start the whole plumbing process and what our system's gonna kind of look like. Kinda. Kinda. All right, guys. So before we do anything in detail, we're gonna have show you some of the materials that we have so far. We have some hoses and pecs, so we can go ahead and basically put everything together some PEX cutters to cut everything that we need to cut, some fittings, different type of fittings, and we'll go more into details about what those fittings are. And we have some things that will go into the actual system, like a strainer, a accumulator, and a pump later on. Um, and some things to strap everything down to make sure that everything's more secure, like this two hole straps. Oh, and Teflon tape. So again, we're going to be going into a lot more details as we go. We're going to link everything down below. Everything that we have here so far, we've got off Amazon, but it's also offered in different places like Lowe's and Home Depot. We have an idea of how our system is going to be and where it's going to go. But like many things in life, especially with building a bus, you don't know how it's going to work until you're actually doing it. So now that we have most of the supplies, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of mark out and place our pieces where things are going to go and then we'll walk you through it. You deserve to be tortured slowly in a dark, wet basement. Molding. And the only way you can get out of the basement is by going through many stages of packaging that you have to open and you have no tools to open any of it. So, like we said last time, this is our freshwater tank. It's 100 gallons. It's gonna be underneath our bed. For this right here, this is the water inlet. We're gonna have a... So, I'm out of breath trying to explain that because it's very confusing and very overwhelming. I know that might not make a whole lot of sense because there's not actual pipes there, but it helps us realize where everything goes, how many fittings we need, and what the general idea of our system is going to be and if it's going to work or not. What we can actually do before the uh, installation is attach the fittings that are going to go to the water tank. For that, like you said, you're going to use a barbed fitting. It's going to go from here to the hose. We use a adapter from a male to a push to connect over here. We could use an adapter from a male to a push to connect elbow over here. For all of this, we're going to make sure that we use Teflon tape. Teflon tape has to be adhered or put on in a specific way. I have made sure that I do it right. day where we have put up our walls and insulation and the bus looks completely different than it did in the first part of this plumbing video 
Now we're gonna start actually installing everything. Now that we have our plan and everything is laid out, I suggest doing something similar. You don't have to necessarily buy everything like we did because we kind of jumped the gun there. But before you put your walls up and start doing permanent things in the bus, I would have an idea and plan for your plumbing. That kind of goes with everything for electrical, floor plan, you know, walls, so you know where to put everything, or you can just build as you go. You'll just have to figure out a lot more things. So here's the updated version of the space. We laid our fittings back out where everything's gonna go like we had before. So we remember our plan. We got our pump in, our accumulator tank, our filter, and then we have our fittings for our, our water inlet and our outdoor shower. And now the first thing we're gonna do is work on putting in supports for the water tank. So after placing the two by twos and securing it in place, it's gonna show you how secure it is. It's not moving itself. We will place one at afterwards on here because it does move up and down. The next step is gonna be something very simple. It's just attaching the air hose from the air outlet to the air inlet. So for attaching the air hose itself, it's gonna be a half inch inner diameter hose that's gonna go from this little circle over here to this little outlet over here. So I think this right here should be good. So as you can see, the only thing we did was attach this little tube from this area to over here with some hose clamps on both sides. So now that we have got that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and work on this area over here. This is where we're going to be able to drain the tank if we ever need to. We went ahead and got this mail to half inch, half inch elbow. We're going to go ahead and connect this too with shark bites, um, blue. Pex pipe. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wow. this is gonna go good. And it all went downhill from there. This one right here is called a ball valve. Basically means that if it's in the T position, it will be closed. If it's in the straight position, it will be open. The reason why we have this piece right here is because we want to be able to go ahead and control this area. Uh, we're going to attach something like this. We're not sure if this is the right one yet, uh, but something that we can attach a hose to that will be connected to this as well. And if we need to drain it, we'll attach a hose and drain it that way. So now we're working with this area over here. This area over here has a couple of components. It's gonna go from the tank. The tank will go to this little strainer right here. It basically is a small filter for the pump itself. Then you can see this right here is attached to the pump itself. Now that I have the pump, the pump will go to an accumulator. The accumulator basically what it does is it holds pressure so that you doesn't have to work the actual pump too much. From here, it will go to this one-way check valve. Basically what this does, it makes sure that no water goes back into this and it burns out the actual pump. Right now we're working on making those connections. So the check valve, you definitely want this to be after your pump. And since we're adding an accumulator, we're gonna add it afterwards. We're gonna have strainer, pump, accumulator, check valve, and that's what we're doing right now. I went ahead and connected this piece already. Can I connect this check valve to uh, the actual accumulator now? With this whole set, another thing that you can buy is this little clip. This little clip is called a disconnect clip. What? 
I went ahead and connected a basically one that we don't need to here. And I drew a little mark and I measured with a ruler how far it'll go for the half inch connections is going in about an inch. I want to make sure that in the future, if I do need to go ahead and disconnect this, that I have enough from here. This is about a quarter of an inch. So I added basically two inches together plus a quarter of an inch to give me two inches and a quarter. Um, and that will be enough room to for me to connect each side as close as possible with me still having enough room to connect this in case I need to disconnect it at any time. There are some connections like this ones or this ones that attach the actual accumulator to the tank, to the pump, that will need some Teflon tape. There is a right way and a wrong way to attach your Teflon tape. The right way to attach it is when it clockwise with the connection looking at you. The wrong way is when it counterclockwise. So the reason for that being is that once you connect it, once you go ahead and put your Teflon tape, this is going to flow in one way, and that's going to be clockwise. If your Teflon tape, you install it counterclockwise, it will go ahead and catch onto this and little by little disconnect the Teflon tape and basically making this useless. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it now with it going clockwise. If you haven't noticed, we decided to go with the SureFlow pump. I did a ridiculous amount of research trying to figure out what type of pump, accumulator, filter, strainer, water heater. The way that I went about it is I looked at reviews and I looked online for the best rated and then I messaged quite a bit of people whose schoolie is already done and I know have been living in it for quite a while. So they could tell me how it's been working so far. Is it reliable? Does it make a lot of noise? Has it, have they had any leaks? Have they had to replace it? Both seem to have really good options and it seems pretty much right down the middle for people who either like the SeaFlow or the SureFlow, but we decided to go with SureFlow. So don't quote me yet. We will further down the line, let you know how well it works. So the pump itself comes with, uh, it looks like rubber feet, but we're gonna go ahead and add some Kelnut behind it just to prevent it from being too noisy. What Kelnut is is basically a butyl layer that reduces noise and vibrations. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it behind it uh, and we'll go ahead and attach the actual pump to um, the, the Kelnut that will be taped onto here. So this connection was very difficult. We've heard a lot of people have problems with this actual um, water inlet. Uh, for us, it fit the way it was supposed to, but because we had installed it uh, already, it was very hard for me to put the Teflon tape on. One and two, it was very hard for me to go ahead and screw it on as much as possible. Not only that, but this is also very flimsy. So I couldn't just get one and turn it. I had to get a uh, two sets of pliers so I can turn both of them. Other than that, we're gonna go ahead and keep going. We're gonna go, be, go ahead and be installing our uh, city water. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and go from here to an elbow, elbow here to a wall, elbow here to this area right here. And this is all gonna be cold water. Remember we put a check valve right here. So just to make sure that this water that's coming from the pump doesn't go out that way. We're also going to be putting another check valve right here, but we'll show you as we go. Just an update. 
Joseph decided he needed to sit on me while we're filming. Just because he wanted to be a part of stuff. I don't know. Is that your safe spot? That's your safe spot, huh? It's daddy's safe spot. So like we said, we're going to be installing a check valve over here going from the actual city water. Make sure you install it the correct way. It will have, if you do shark bites, if you use shark bites, it will have an actual arrow pointing in which direction it needs to go. Over here. Yeah, was too so as you can see, this piece that we cut right here was too long. We wanted to even with this, but it's just a little bit too high. So we're gonna have to cut this connection. We're gonna have to um, take this connection off and cut it a little bit. So that's what we're gonna use this for. Very easy to use. You're gonna go ahead and have this end facing your connection. You're gonna go ahead and just clip it on there. You're gonna pull and pull different directions. So you're gonna go ahead and hold it and pull. And that's it, take it off. Okay. We have some bad news. It's actually not very happy news. Anyways, what happened was that I accidentally over tightened it, the outdoor shower. This piece right here broke. I tightened it so much that this went up and it broke this piece right here. Basically, the reason for me telling you this is that not everything you do is going to go according to plan. And sometimes things are going to break and you're going to have to replace them. We already have the replacement piece in the cart. This is the kind of stuff that we want to share with you as well. Just letting you know that not everything is as quick and easy as you see in the videos. But it is things that happen uh, in your build. Now we're moving on. We're going to go ahead and install the actual water inlet. The water inlet is going to go to a gravity fill, which is this area right here that's running downwards. And it's going to go into this top piece right here. So we're going to go ahead and get this piece. This is a one and a quarter inner diameter piece. It's going to go into this and this. We got a five foot piece from Amazon. It's the same system as the air hose yep. using these clamps. And we're gonna try to get it at a downward slant. main section here and we went over our water inlet hose the air outlet the city water coming in the check valve for the city water and where it enters the system and then coming out of the tank through the pump accumulator check valve so it doesn't go back in and then going up to the cold water for the outdoor shower now we're going to move on where the water coming from the tank or the city water continues through the wheel well to the rest of the system. Our plan for this section is for that pipe to go in here through the wheel well and then once it gets over here to attach it to the wall so it doesn't rattle and it can fit right inside this wall and it's going to go along here and then it's gonna exit out this uh, wall right here with an elbow. So we won't have any connections actually inside the wall or inside the wheel well. All the connections will still be accessible. 
You need to take into account that the wood or the pipes might expand and contract with the weather and with the temperatures. So you don't want it to be an exact fit. You want it to give it a little bit of wiggle room so things won't uh, be smashed in there or when it does contract uh, or expand, it might break or crack something. of each pipe just in case but this this pipe is the water coming out of the tank and it will come straight out and then meet a T to go up into the water heater and the other side of the T will continue to give the shower uh, some cold water and then this hot this hot water will be coming from the water heater and it will meet a T and one side of it, so this side will be coming from the water heater. This side will go back to the outdoor shower to give it hot water. And this side will go to the sink to give it hot water. So we don't want to be running into pipes and stuff while we're still working and building walls. So we're going to leave that area until we get further along. But for now, we're just going to run the hot water back like you just saw. And then we're going to work on going up and over to the outdoor shower. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have the basic components of our plumbing system. No, we do. What is up? What? What? All right, guys, so that was part one of our plumbing video. This is how we installed the basic sections of the plumbing area with the water tank, water pump, pump accumulator. and the accumulator, as well as the little mesh part that goes before the pump. And kind of sort of the outdoor shower. So we hope that you enjoyed the video, find it entertaining or educational. Uh, if, if you like the video, please give it a big, big thumbs up. If you have any comments, if you have any tips, leave them, leave them down in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you are, thank you so much. You guys help support us and help us keep going and that pushes us uh, even more. You can also follow us on our social medias. They'll be linked below and tagged all around here. Um, at gus.gps on Instagram to follow the progress of the bus. <laughs> and as always, don't forget to enjoy life. Stay positive. And keep going places. Suck us! You guys are stupid. <laughs>